Praise God. So delighted to have everyone out with us on this beautiful, beautiful day. And I just pray that you're enjoying the wonderful weather outside. And uh, we appreciate you for coming out to be with us here in the Lord's presence. Well, won't you just bow for another brief word of prayer before you're seated. Father, we just love you and praise you and give you thanks. We honor you and bless you, Lord, and just exalt your name. Thank you for this wonderful day and time to be in your presence, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to be here safely and in your presence. Thank you for the majestic praise and worship. We thank you for the fellowship one with another, Lord, and we are grateful for the opportunity to gather around your word. We open our hearts to receive from you. I pray less of me, more of you, none of me and all of you. Speak through my vocal cords, think through my mind, enlighten my heart and spirit. And Father, we purpose in our hearts to be doers of your word and not hearers only. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, our great teacher, and it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let every heart say amen, amen, amen. You all may be seated. Thank you for joining Brothers of the Word, because, brother, you need the Word. We welcome all of you joining us by television and those of you joining us online at brothersoftheword.com or Facebook Live. Always a wonderful joy and delight to have you to tune in and join us. Well, we'd like to share just a little humor. Um, Pastor Riley he was in the middle of his sermon when he noticed a man had fallen asleep with his head on his wife's shoulder. Wake up your husband, Pastor Riley snapped. The wife smiled and replied, you put him to sleep, you wake him up. Well, we're sharing, we're sharing part two of an account we started on last time, and this is, this is actually, would be part 11 in our Miracles series, the Miracles of Jesus series. Um, but we, we didn't get an opportunity to complete the last uh, account that we looked at, and so we're doing part two of that one. And that's over in the, the Gospel of Mark. We're looking at the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10. Verse 46 through 52, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verse 46 through 52. And we'll read it again, um, beginning with verse 46, Mark chapter 10. And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called, and they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Wilt thou, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. So we're talking about the miracles of, G of Jesus. This is part 11, the miracles of Jesus, part 11. And, and just to recapture um, some of the highlights, some of the points that we made from this illustration, this particular miracle, uh, we talked about always place yourself uh, where the outgoings of God are. Always place yourself where, where God's presence is flowing out of. And so that's where blind Bartimaeus happened to be in a place where Jesus was flowing out of. He was coming out of Jericho and Bartimaeus was positioned in perfect position. So always, always put yourself in, in the places where the God's presence is flowing. So that's prayer or, or reading your Bible or at church or among other believers or 
uh, where your faith and expectancy is, is strong. So you put yourself in fasting, seeking the Lord. You put, put yourself in the atmosphere where, where God is moving. And then we also talked about um, seizing the opportunity, seizing the opportunity. Uh, Bartimaeus had to seize the opportunity while the opportunity presented itself. We are not sure if Jesus ever passed that way again. So Bartimaeus probably had one chance to get Jesus' attention, and he did that. And then we talked about uh, being willing to stand out from the crowd, being willing to stand out from the crowd. This account really teaches us uh, that you have to, sometimes you have to separate yourself from the crowd because sometimes the whole crowd can be wrong. Sometimes the whole crowd can be wrong and you have to be willing to stand for right even if everybody else is wrong and even if you're the only one. And, you know, whenever you're doing something that is in the will of God and when you're doing what's right, when, you, when, you, when you're doing what God told you to do, it doesn't matter if, if the whole crowd is wrong, and that doesn't matter. As long as you're doing what God told you to do, and you're doing what's right, and uh, you're doing what pleases God, it doesn't matter about the crowd. So be willing to stand out from the crowd. This also teaches us don't take direction for your personal life from a crowd. Don't take uh, direction for your personal life for a crowd because this crowd was about to mess up Bartimaeus. <laughs> they were messing his personal life up. So he didn't allow uh, the crowd to give him direction for his personal life. The, the, normally speaking, the crowd mentality is normally, um, you know, it's, it's the wide path. It's the path that's... that's um, it's, a, it's the path most travel. Thank you, Brother Edelow. <laughs> and so, you know, it's a wide path. And, uh, but see, eagles fly alone. You know, eagles don't run in packs. They don't fly. They don't, they, 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 they. So to go to certain heights and to do certain things, um, it's a different path you have to take. And so it teaches us that you have to, you have to move against the crowd. Even Warren Buffett, the, probably the greatest investor of our time, he always said, buy when everybody else is selling. When everybody else is selling in the market, that's when you buy. And he said the converse, when everybody else is buying, that's when you sell. And he's teaching that principle, of you have to move against the crowd. You have to move against the crowd. Uh, you know, if you go to the store right now, this is a time where you want to be buying winter clothes. Because nobody's buying winter clothes right now. So that's what's cheap. You can get, man, you can get you a fur coat for a little of nothing right now. <laughs> so you buy your winter clothes in the, in the, you know, when it's getting hot. Because the stores are trying to get rid of all that inventory. And so they cut the prices way down. That's when you buy, man, I buy my best shirts when it, I buy my best polo type shirts when it's winter time. Because they, they, they put the polos out for a little of nothing. And I just go by and pick them all up. <laughs> So you have to move against the crowd, and that's a principle of life. And uh, so we learned that from, from Blind Bartimaeus. He had to be willing to stand out from the crowd. You never take uh, direction for your personal life from the crowd because normally the, the, the crowd, that, that mentality is normally not the best. It's normally not the best. And so you have to be willing to <clears throat> stand alone and, and uh, stand away from the crowd. And then uh, we also learned that Bartimaeus would not quit. The, quiet, the crowd tried to get him to quit, and he wouldn't quit. He would not quit. Um, quitting, quitting, when you quit, quitting makes you weak. Quitting makes you weak. Quitting becomes a habit. So these are reasons why we shouldn't quit. Quitting makes you weak. Quitting becomes a habit. Quitters never win. Quitters never win. Quitting gives others an excuse to quit. Quitting gives others an excuse to quit. Quitting reduces your confidence. Here are some reasons not to quit. You've already been hurt, so you might as well stick it out and get a reward from it. You've already been hurt. See, Bartimaeus was already embarrassed. 
he had already embarrassed himself, so he might as well stick it out at this point. <laughs> you know, so you've already, you've already suffered, so no need in quitting now. No, you stay in and get a reward from, you, from, from it, so you stay in. Uh, we don't quit because somebody believes in you. You never know who's watching you. You may have a child or a relative or a friend. Somebody is watching your life, and so if you quit, you affect somebody else. Somebody is depending on you. Somebody is depending on you, so don't quit. You get stronger when you don't quit. You get stronger. You get smarter when you don't quit. You build character when you don't quit. You grow. You grow when you don't quit. You become an inspiration to others when you don't quit. You become an inspiration to others. I'm sure all of us, we were inspired this past weekend to see Tiger win this, his fifth Masters. See, that inspired everybody. But he wouldn't quit. You know, the critics had told him to give up. They had told him that he was washed up. Go ahead and they had told him to retire with dignity. They had told him all of these things and he would not quit. And so now he's, they're calling this the greatest comeback in sports history because he refused to quit. Champions never quit. Winners never quit. And so we become an inspiration to others when we don't quit, when we don't quit. Man, God loves it. God loves it when life throws us adversity after adversity after adversity after adversity. But yet we won't quit. We won't quit. We won't stop. We won't stop believing. We won't stop working. We won't stop smiling. We won't stop loving. We won't stop giving. We won't stop sharing. We won't stop caring. We won't stop. We won't quit. And so, you, you know, God loves that. God loves that type of tenacity, and he loves that type of perseverance when you don't quit. And so, um, this is one reason that Bartimaeus was highlighted because of his uh, not quitting, his, his ability not to quit, his ability to persevere, his importunity. And so this is why he was highlighted. Here are some tips to help you to not quit. Num- number one, take one day at a time. Take one day at a time. You know, if you try to take on, you know, if you try to solve all your problems at one time it can become overwhelming so you take one day at a time you know just just get through the day just get through the day <laughs> take one day at, at a time don't bite off more than you can chew just just deal with today just deal with today then trust the holy spirit trust god trust the holy spirit to lead you and guide you trust god to, to put you in the right place and uh, put you around the right people trust trust god to work and move on your behalf you trust God. So we're not designed to carry the weight of the world. No, God, God handles that. And so we don't have to try to carry the weight of the world. You, you, you relax and you trust God. Just trust God. And then number three, rest. Your, your perspective is renewed when you rest. And so sometimes uh, when you're facing difficult situations, don't quit. You simply need to rest. You're just tired. So you need to rest so that you can be renewed. So you rest. Number four, pace yourself. Life is a marathon. It's not a sprint. So you want to build yourself for the long haul. You want to build yourself for the long haul. Uh, so you pace yourself. You pace yourself. Don't go 100 miles an hour and try to do it all at once. No, pace yourself for the long haul. That's how you last. That's how you laugh. And so you have to treat life as a marathon. You want to you wanna incorporate things into your life that help you to last for the long haul, for the long haul. Praise God. Man, I've been preaching now for 30 years. Praise God. I'm still going strong. See, man, I love that. I love that. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm looking better. I'm in better shape. I'm stronger, faster, smarter, wiser than I've ever been in my life. Well, I thank God. I was built for the long haul, built for the long haul. Now, I preached, I preached like a house on fire when I was 18, 19, 20, but I didn't burn myself out. Man, I'm still on fire today. Glory to God. Still on fire today. Still on fire today. 30 years later, still on fire today. Even better looking. But you, <laughs> but you had to build yourself for the long haul. 
you have to build yourself for the long haul. So you have to you have to build in breaks and time for renewal, and you have to pace yourself. Don't wear yourself out and be stressed out and burn out, and all of those things. So you have to pace yourself. And then you want to remain faithful and consistent where you are. Remain faithful and consistent where you are. And here's some other reasons uh, not to quit is, is think about those who are cheering you on. Think about those. It could be someone who has um, proceeded into the next life and they're part of your great cloud of witnesses and they're cheering you on. The, could be your mother or your grandmother, your father, your grandfather, your, uh, some great heroes that have been a part of your life, and they've gone on, but now they're cheering for you. And so you don't quit because of those who are cheering you on, both in this life and those who are already in the next life. Uh, here's something. Think why you started. Always remember your reason, your why. It keeps you from quitting. I have to go back and remind yourself of your why, your reason. Think why you started. And then take time to celebrate. You know, celebrate the small victories. Celebrate what is going right. So celebrate yourself. Nobody else takes you out. Take yourself out. Take yourself out. today. You know, somebody says, is this your birthday? I said, no, I'm just celebrating myself. <laughs> I'm just celebrating today. Every day is a celebration, man. It's, it's, it's a blessing to be alive. It's a, be- it's a blessing. Just celebrate yourself. You are a unique individual. You're special, man. You're handcrafted by God. There's no one on earth that quite has the mix of personality and talents and gifts and makeup. No one on earth is quite like you. And so you're one of a kind. You're unique. So you have to take care of yourself. Celebrate yourself. Man, you're, you are, uh, I started to say you are an antique, <laughs> but you're special. No, you're special. You're special. You, you, hold a, you hold high value because you're one of a kind. You're rare. That's the word I was looking for. You're rare. You're rare. There's no one else on earth like you. You're the only one of a kind. And that's why when you simply copy someone else you're really limiting yourself because God didn't create you to be another copy he already has one of those he wanted one of you so he created us to be individual and to be unique and and, uh, just be yourself be yourself so you have to celebrate yourself celebrate yourself celebrate yourself man and and learn to enjoy yourself and and uh, yeah take yourself out to dinner I may do that tonight uh, <laughs> celebrate yourself. So here are some other things we learn from we learn from Bartimaeus. We learn from we learn from Bartimaeus. Uh, don't stay in the same old condition. Don't stay in the same old condition. I like Bartimaeus because Bartimaeus was he was willing to change. Man, he had been blind a long time all his life, and he made a decision and he acted when he had the opportunity. I like that. So that lets us know don't stay in the same old, deci- uh, the same old condition, but make a decision and act. Be willing to act. I like uh, something that Coach uh, Paul Bear Bryant said. He said, cause something to happen. If nothing's happened in your life, you cause something to happen. You make something happen. Make something happen. Man, if you know if your ship has not come in, swim out to a, a ship. You make something happen. You got to make something happen sometime. You got to make something happen. Make something happen. I like that. Tony Davis said, call something to happen. Call something to happen. Man, you can, you, you can create something that, that creates a ripple effect. You can make something happen if you're urgent enough, if you're persistent enough, if you are determined enough, if you're bold enough. And this is what we learned from Bartimaeus. Nothing was happening in his life. He was sitting by the side of the road, blind and begging. Nothing was happening. And Bartimaeus got, when he got the opportunity, man, he changed, he called something to happen. He called something to happen. That's what I've been really loving about these miracles we've been studying. I love people that call something to happen. Remember the woman that touched the hem of his garment? She called something to happen. She called something to happen. She caused it. She caused it. She called something to happen. So we learn. Uh, we have to make something happen. Call something to happen. Make something happen. I like that. Have to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. So call something to happen. Make something happen. 
you have to accept responsibility for your, for your own life. Now, that's what Bartimaeus did. He didn't listen to the crowd. He said, look, this is my life, and I have to live this life. I'm blind. You all are not blind. So he had to make his own decision for his own life. He had to take responsibility for his own life. And so you have to know where you want to go and get going. You have to know where you want to go in life, and you get going. Be willing to do whatever it takes, and you have to have that tenacity, that boldness, and that determination. You will never possess what you are unwilling to pursue and Bartimaeus showed that, that, that dogged determination and t- tenacity and perseverance and his boldness. And he possessed what he pursued. He possessed what he pursued. And it takes courage. You know, it takes courage to change. It's, it's easier to remain the way we are, but it takes courage when you make a decision to change because you're, you're going into uncharted territory. And, and so it takes courage to say that I want to change my life and I want to change where I am and I want to change my circumstances. Change, this is what uh, C. Neil Strait said. He said, change is always hardest for the man who is in a rut for he has scaled down his living to that which he can handle comfortably and welcomes no change or challenge that would lift him up. So notice that. Someone else said that stubbornness and unwillingness to change is the energy of fools. Stubbornness and being unwilling to change is the energy of fools. Mankind is divided into three categories. Those who are unchangeable, not willing to change, those who are changeable, and those who cause change. Those are the three categories of man. You're in, you're either, you're in one of those categories. You're either not changeable, you're changeable, or you, you cause change. You make things change. And so this is, um, this is something that we... This is something that we learned from Bartimaeus' life. Let me share this little, uh, I came across an interesting little poem entitled, Go From, speaking of things we should change from and things we should go to. I believe it was John Mason who penned this poem, but he said, go from burnout to being recharged. Go Go from failure to learning. Go from regrets of the past to dreams of the future. Go from being frustrated to being focused. Go from seeing God nowhere to seeing him everywhere. Go from prejudice to reconciliation. Go from ordinary to extraordinary. Go from defective to effective. Go from despiteful to insightful. Go from whining to winning, go from lukewarm to on fire, go from security to opportunity, go from fear to faith, go from resisting to receiving, go from thinking of yourself to thinking of others, go from complaining to obtaining, go from drifting to steering, go from being a problem to being an answer. Go from being a copy to being an original. Go from trying to committing. Go from envying others to serving others. Go from ingratitude to thanksgiving. Go from fault finding to forgiveness. Go from criticism to compliments. Go from procrastination to progress. Go from alibis to action. Go from hesitation to obedience. Go from blending in to standing out, which is what Bartimaeus did. Go from hesitation to obedience. Go from fractured to focus. Go from taking to giving. Go from wishing to wisdom. Go from the world to the word. Go from being full of pride to being full of God. Man, I love that. I love that. Go from. So we all need to have, we should be in this tension of, 
of constantly evolving, constantly changing, moving from one level to a better level and uh, improving ourselves and those around us. And so we learned that. We learned that from Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus, he left where he was in order to have something better that he had never had. Here's something else we learned from, from Bartimaeus. If you look at one of the verses in our text, um, I'm not sure which one it is, is where he, where he asked for, where he, well, when he called out to Jesus, he simply, he said, have mercy. And that was his plea. Have mercy. Have mercy. That shows his humility. He didn't come out of his own self-righteousness. He was basically saying, have mercy on me, Lord, a sinner. Remember Jesus said, when Jesus gave the parable about the, the um, Pharisee and the, the public, and one just beat on his chest and said, have mercy on me, Lord, a sinner. And that's what Bartimaeus did. He just cried out, have mercy. Have mercy, Father, have mercy. Have mercy. It's your mercy. It's your mercy. I'm in a pitiful situation, in a pitiful condition. I just ask you to have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. I ask you to forgive me and heal me. Have mercy. Just let your mercy touch me. I just want a drop of your mercy. Not that I'm deserving, not that I'm righteous, not that I am good, but because you are, I cry out for your mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. And that showed his humility. So Bartimaeus came in great humility. So he had great he had great. Um, perseverance, which we call importunity. He had um, humility. He also had, um, he also had faith because he actually, he called him Lord. He called Jesus Lord. Now this, this account is actually in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And in one of those accounts, he calls him Lord. The other two accounts, he calls him Jesus. He cried out and said, Jesus, thou son of David, showing that he believed he was the Messiah, but he also believed he was Lord. He said, Jesus, oh Lord. He called Jesus Lord. That is faith when you make Jesus Lord of your life. He called him Lord. So he releases faith. He called him Lord, and I believe that he, he had, that was by the Holy Spirit that he called him Lord, that he knew who he was. He called him Lord. Now notice this, he, he, um, he knew that Jesus had the power to command his deliverance, but he also knew that he not only had power, but he had goodness. And this is actually... You don't have to turn there, but in Psalm 72, verse 12 and 13, it foretells the kindness and the help and the salvation that will come to those in need when they cry out to God. It foretells that. And so Bartimaeus knew, probably just from what he had heard, that the one who would come, he would be kind, he would be willing to help, he would provide for anybody that would cry out to him. And so he probably knew that. And so he releases, he releases faith. God never ignores a desperate prayer. He never ignores a desperate prayer. And Bartimaeus was desperate. He was desperate. And I want you to see in verse 49, the Bible says that Jesus stood still. Jesus stood still. That lets us know that no matter how busy we are, or how in a hurry we are, you should always be willing to stand still to do good for somebody. You should always be willing to slow down to do good. Always be willing to slow down to do good. And then you notice Jesus called them. Jesus said, bring him here. Now, Jesus could have healed him from a distance. Jesus had sent his word before and healed people. He could have healed them from a distance. But Jesus wanted him to come. He gave him an invitation. He said, bring him here. Come. He called him. He called for him. Jesus calls for us because he wants to have personal interaction, personal relationship. I love this, man. I love this. You never wonder why Jesus was so adamant about who touched me when that woman touched the hem of his garment he was so adamant about finding her 
because he wanted to bring her to him. He wanted to know who it was so she could come to him. He didn't want her to grab a miracle and run off without ever knowing him. He brought her face to face with himself. That's his desire to know us and have a personal relationship with us. So he did the same thing with Bartimaeus. He could have healed Bartimaeus where he was. But he called him. Come here. Brought him to him. Licked him in his eyes. Probably hugged him. Man, that's a personal relationship. Isn't that good? Man, that's a person. He calls us to him. He calls us to. He doesn't just send his power to you. He calls you to him. He calls you to him. We get to have face-to-face -face encounter with him. He calls us. And then, I love this, Bartimaeus got up. He arose. He changed his position. To rise means you change your posture, your position. We have to rise up in our thinking, in our actions, in our belief. He rose then he cast off his garment that he had on. You have to cast off some old uh, anything that would hinder you. See, he didn't want to trip or he didn't want that garment to trip him up or be in the way. So you have to get rid of, that's what the Bible says in Hebrews, let us lay aside every sin and weight that does so easily beset us or hinder us. So don't let anything in your life hinder you, sin or anything else that's, that's, that will hinder your relationship or hinder your, your race in life. Praise God. Man, I'm running out of time. I got <laughs> but here's, the, here's the, let me finish. I'm almost done. It's not going to take me long. Um, then in verse 51, Jesus, I love this. Jesus asked him a question. What is it you want me to do for you? Man, you're talking about a heart of compassion. Talk about God showing his willingness to bless us. God showing us his willingness to do us favors. God is disposed to show favors. He is full of kindness and mercy and goodness. He said, what is it you would have me to do for you? What would you like me to do for you? Oh, man. I'm thinking about a scripture over in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18, that says, The Lord waits. He longs and he waits and he lifts himself up so that he can be gracious to us and be good to us. He's longing and waiting, oh man, for an opportunity to be good. Stand to your feet. I'm, I'm on my last minute. I'm on my last minute. I'm out of time. Praise God. Praise God. Oh man. I love that. And then the final, final point I'll make is after he healed him, the Bible says that Bartimaeus followed him. Bartimaeus wanted to learn more about the kingdom of God and about the Son of God. He followed him. So when our lives are truly enlightened, we are here to Jesus. We stick to him. When he changes our lives, we stick to him. Bartimaeus stuck with him. He, he followed him to learn he followed him to testify. This is the Son of God. He followed him to give his testimony. I was blind, but now I can see. Because of God's mercy, because of God's goodness, God is good. Bartimaeus was helping Jesus preach wherever he went. Bartimaeus was right there and said, He is good. I was blind and I can see now. He is merciful. He is kind. He is gracious. He asked me what he wanted to do for me. Bartimaeus preached for Jesus. He followed him and stuck with him. So he was a student, but he was also a preacher. On the, Bartimaeus was on the, the witnessing team for Jesus. Oh, man, I'm out of time. <laughs> Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we just love you, and we just rejoice in you. We give you thanks. Thank you, Lord, for your wonderful grace and your mercy. And we thank you for the miracles of Jesus, and we thank you for these truths and principles that we walk out in our lives. And we love you and praise you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say amen, 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 amen.